always the important thing is setting up these problems and the first thing I do is determine important locations in the picture so um, one important location I'm going to call it A is over here uh, pretty much the starting point for the roller coaster and then as you read the question we're supposed to find out how fast it's going down here so I'm going to call that B and uh, also find out how far it compresses the spring when it runs into the spring over here so I'm going to call that C um, the other really important thing to do at the outset of these problems is to establish where you want y to be equal to zero and of course that's because one of our equations has y in it and that literally stands for the y coordinate and so you can set y equals zero anywhere you want to um, as long as you're consistent with that sometimes there's a location that makes your uh, calculations simpler or even just the diagram almost shows you where they're measuring things from and in this diagram um, we have ground level here this dotted line they're telling us this is 100 meters above ground level this is 35 meters below ground level so it, it would make things pretty easy if we made ground level where y equals zero so that's the setup I also as part of the setup at each of these three locations like to write down what I know about speed um, Y coordinate and compression of the spring because those represent the three different types of energy that we deal with kinetic energy gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy so let's try that so here um, the problem does say it starts from rest at the top of the hill the Y coordinate at the top of the hill is 100 meters and X is not applicable because it's not touching a spring if an object is not in contact with a spring then there's not going to be any elastic potential energy associated with it let's look at B um, we do not know the speed there that's one of the things we're gonna to have to calculate uh, we do know the Y coordinate it's negative 35 and that's really important the fact that it's um, below zero means we do have to use a negative number and again X here is not applicable uh, finally at C um, the speed is back to zero because it says find the compression of the spring when the coaster uh, has come to a stop momentarily come to a stop um, I say momentarily because it will bounce back the other way and I probably should have written the word momentarily in the in the statement of the problem there um, the Y coordinate there is zero and X that is an unknown that's something that we're trying to find out you know one other thing that's in this problem that I should have pointed out when I was marking locations A B and C is that you do need to read the problem and scan to see whether there are any forces acting on the object other than gravity or springs the force of gravity and the force that a spring exerts are considered conservative forces and we take care of what they do using potential energy any other force and friction is a big culprit here is considered a non-conservative force it doesn't generate potential energy so we have to take care of them by calculating the work they do what I like to do is I like to highlight sections of the problem like right here right in that section um, we have a force other than gravity or a spring that's doing work so we should remind ourselves that in that section we have to calculate F cosine theta D anytime we move from before that section to after that section we're going to have to put that into our formula. All right, so let's um, start here. It says determine the speed of the coaster when it's at the bottom of the underground section. So we're really going to compare A to B. And so when I set up my equation, WNC equals delta U plus delta K, um, and I think about the WNC part of this equation, I'm just looking at moving from A to B. So the friction is over here that's not between A and B and since the friction is not between A and B since the only forces that are doing work between A and B really it's just gravity that's a conservative force I'm gonna put a zero on the left hand side of that equation and then I'm gonna compare the potential at B and the potential at A the kinetic at B and the kinetic at A so let's see um, at B the potential energy would be the mass times 9.8 times the Y coordinate negative 35 the potential at energy at a would be the mass times 9.8 times the Y coordinate which is hundred 
How about the kinetic energy? Well, we're trying to figure out how fast it's going at B, so I'm going to write 1 half mv at B squared, because I don't know the speed at B. But then at A, it starts from rest, so that's 0. You'll notice I didn't put the mass in. I, I kind of knew that uh, we could divide then both sides by mass. And since every single term has a mass in it, the mass cancels out. Just makes our equation a little bit easier. Um, and then we can just simply solve for the speed at B. So that's just something you need to do on your calculator. I'll try to do that um, real quick here. So 9.8 times negative 35. And we have 9.8 times 100. Have to add those things together and then to find the speed, multiply by 2 and take the square root. And I get 35.69. So the speed at B is 35.69 meters per second. And that's our answer. Okay, so let's go on to do the second part of the question, which is finding how far the spring compresses when um, the car momentarily comes to a stop. So now here we have a choice. When we find our change in potential and change in kinetic, we can compare B and C, or we can compare A and C. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to compare adjacent locations. In fact, I would prefer to compare A to C because this is all given information. If this was a test and I had to calculate the speed at B and I made a mistake, then I wouldn't want to carry that mistake through to calculate something at C. So I like to compare given information to unknown information. So maybe I'll do that over in this section of the um, paper. So I'm going to, again, use WNC equals delta U plus uh, delta K. And again, I'm going to compare A to C, but now a little bit different. As you move from A to C, you're going to go through this section where there's friction, where there is a non-conservative force. You've got to include that in your calculation. So that means here, on this side of the equation, I need to have um, the force of friction times the cosine of the angle between the force of friction and the way that the object is moving and the distance that it goes. So this is calculating work right here. Um, and then that's going to be equal to the potential at uh, C minus the potential at A, and then again the kinetic at C minus the kinetic at A. So that's a lot of things we have to put into that equation, but let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, so I think the force of friction is given here, yes, 12,000 newtons. So 12,000 newtons is the force that the brakes exert. The uh, angle here, well, you know, to stop something, the force has to be that way, but the way that it's moving, is that way and so that's 180 degrees apart so we're going to use cosine of 180 and the distance that's given for that is 20 so that's what goes on the left hand side of my equation potential energy at C well we have a y coordinate of 0 so there's no gravitational potential energy but it's going to be compressing a spring and so we have elastic potential energy so we have 1 half K is given as 500,000 uh, and then x squared, and x is the value that we're looking for. Um, minus, so that's the potential energy at C, minus the potential energy at A, and uh, so that is gravitational potential energy, like we did last time. So that's going to be the mass, which is 500 times 9.8 times 100. So that's the potential energy at C minus the potential energy at A. And now let's talk about the kinetic energy. Well, the kinetic energy at C is zero because it comes to a momentary stop. And the kinetic energy at A is zero also because it started from rest. So that is the equation that you have to solve to come up with a value for X. So let me do that. Let me multiply these things together. It's basically 12,000 times negative one times 20. And so that's negative 240,000. Um, and that's equal to 250,000 x squared minus 500 times 9.8 times 100, which is 490,000. And so then just finishing up the algebra, um, going to move this over to the other side. I'm going to divide by 250,000. That actually gives me 1. 1 equals x squared, so that, of course, means that uh, 1 meter 
is the answer for x. The spring will be compressed one meter.